guys, welcome back to Everyday Struggle in the Dusk at Academics and Wayno here. It's a beautiful Monday morning in New York. Academics is meticulously taking notes. Please, can we see what you've been <laughs> writing for the past two minutes? Yeah. Come on. Shanti do my, <laughs> Shanti do my baby. Show the camera. You were that type of student. You were literally class. sleeping a minute nah, ago with your nah, fake nah, writing nah, notes. Nah. Let's get into the show. I'm What's an up? A How was that weekend? Mine was, was cool, cool. cool. Yeah, mine was cool. I ain't do too much. I was cooling out. Mm. I was in LA, you know, just trying to soak up the vibes. I'm I got his first pedicure coaster. of all time. Yo, no I one did cares get a about pedicure. For the first time? Yo, he put the whole first thing time. on Instagram. The whole thing. Of course I had to No one needs thing, to see your Instagram. toes that I got my first one like a month ago. Oh, look at you guys trying new things. I don't know things. if you feel like that. I like it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm bringing my mom to get a pedicure. I'm going to do it next week. That pedicure was fire. Wow, okay. Look at you guys treating yourselves. All right, that's good. Self-care here at Everyday Struggle. Absolutely. Um, we got a lot of new music. Put the pen down. You're not writing anything. You know I came today prepared with facts. Show me the paper. Facts about what? All right, man. Yo, let's get into the topics, man. Music, music. Um, all right, so Future dropped a new project this weekend, Save Me, Seven Songs. Uh, so this is, I guess, the follow-up to Wizard, which he's dropped back in January, but it sounds more like Hendrix. Um, did you guys like this project? Semi-surprise project. Some people knew it was coming because he deleted all of his photos, so it was a sign that something was about to drop, <laughs> but there was no single, no, no rollout. Do you have some notes on this act? I do got notes, but Wayne could go first. I want to know how Wayne will spend his weekend enjoying this new Future album or EP. Well, I listened to this 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 EP and um, like I didn't, I wasn't into like the first like three songs. You like, don't like sad music in no, general. No, I don't like kind of sad future. I'm a, I'm about to say that like it's very dark sounding. Like no, and now what's the last one? Love Love Thy Enemies. I, I I fuck with that and Government Official, but other than that, it's like. It came out of nowhere, and I love like the the album that he dropped earlier, The Wizard, mm -hmm. to where I didn't know that he was dropping nothing else. But like this shit threw me by surprise. But I, I didn't really get into it because it's I don't like sad future. Like some people like love sad, sad future. future. Yeah. Are you one of those people? Academics. He like sad all, all types of sad music. I, I don't like sad <laughs> future. Like he, you do. Don't even sit here and lie. Wait, I was tweaking. I'm tweaking. Uh, this was. I'm not gonna lie. This was amazing. Future drop. This gave me hope for future going forward, honestly. Really? Yeah. Th I'm going to be honest with you. The album that Future dropped earlier <clears throat> this year was Uninspired Bullshit. I'm going to keep you it on. Wild. No, no, no. I'm being honest. You wild. Future since 2017, and, and that's when you dropped Future and Hendrix. Niggas has been dropping anything. World on Drugs, Super Slimy, World. world um, the, the one earlier this year was, was, was The Wizard. Yeah, The Wizard. Yeah. Un uninspired bullshit. I can't, and, and, I can't agree and, and, with and what I mean by that is, is what I got into, and maybe I'm speaking as my personal experience from Future as a fan. Mm -hmm. I got into the majority of Future music, where I know some people just love the turn up shit. I, I got into it when Future was actually dealing with some emotion, whether it w whatever it was, whether it was Cody and Crazy, where he's pretty much that's a cry for help to me. It sounds fire. I'm not saying he don't make whack music, but he makes uninspired shit. And after DS2, I'm, he kind of got in a rut where he, where he kind of realized what fans want. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of artists get to that point where you know what fans want, but it's not continuing your personal growth or development as an artist, or it's just not telling real stories, right? I mean, a nigga came out and said, yo, I was too scared to really tell y'all that I was going through some shit that I would stop using drugs because I know what y'all want. Y'all want the bullshit, finally. The nigga actually dropped an album where he was brave enough to, he was dealing with the demons here. He was dealing with a lot of, like, a lot of character flaws that people point out uh, uh, about him on the blogs, whether it's his relationship with women, how he views women, um, even certain type of behavior. Also, drugs. Love That Enemy is one of my favorite songs this year. Love that song. The intro as well was fire. Um, Xanax Damage, St. Lucia. I like this. It felt like the nigga had a spirit. I'm tired of, yo, I'm tired of songs like jumping on a J. Yo, get them songs out of here. Like, how many times could you make the same regurgitated bullshit? I get it. It's going to spin in the club for four to six weeks. But like, I you listen. You say he don't make nothing that's trash. So how is it bullshit and all that? All right, so look, so, so when, when, Uninspired. So when that future Hendrix album, mm -hmm. what I feel like is I think that on first listen, everybody's thinking he's going to make another Gucci flip-flops and all of that shit. If you listen to that album a few times, it's a good album. Mm -hmm. This is not trash, but I'm just saying I don't like this fucking 
You don't like introspective dark room, future? Okay. Dark room, I, I, I'm going to tell everybody my secret Sam. Right now, I, I, Shotgun, the thing about Shotgun was really funny. It kind of used like the drums from a Sierra song. Mm -hmm. It sounded like a bit, you know what I'm saying? It's, but, but other than that, it's only seven songs. It's not a lot for me to critique here. It's cool, but I don't like it more than his album that dropped this year. Shotgun absolutely sound like he could have written that and gave it to Sierra. I mean, um, it had the same type of exact, the exact yeah. type of drums. Off, you know? it, it um, it, it sounded like Promise in a way. Like, yeah. if, you, if you know that song, exactly. Promise by Sierra. Exactly. I, I'm not gonna lie. Again, not complete. Again, what you're saying, but I do like. I, I'm so much of a fan of artists. I like not becoming stagnant that I felt Future was getting there. And I felt Future was just, he knows what the fans want. He was just gonna give you us You think it's just personal to him? Like yeah, this is the most yeah, per personal I, I, felt, I felt this is an album to get him past certain shit. I'm telling you, like, it comes full circle. But we consider it this album, because it's seven songs. Uh, well, I'm not gonna <laughs> Seven is not super short, though. Uh, what did you like about The Wizard that you, well, this is too dark for you. What did you like about The Wizard compared to this, then? Biggest thing on The Wizard, is like, of course, it, it. As far as what Ag is saying about like regurgitated, yeah, it's it's like the same subject matter, right? Mm -hmm. Same subject matter, but it's better production. I think on like when you first when you first listen to it, it's like ah, uh, it, it, it's cool, it's the same future shit. But that's because we expect a certain thing for future all the time, and people not listening to hear the sound. When you listen to the whole shit, sound in and out. It's really dope. I love the sen the sonics of it. Okay. I fuck with with that album. Like, and on my first listen, I didn't, I wasn't crazy about it either. And I was like, I took a couple drives and I listened to it. I was like, yo, this shit is actually really good. You know? Okay, so maybe it depends on if you really wanted to hear introspective future or not. I felt this is um, future, and it's gonna sound bad, but I'm comparing it just per album. Mm -hmm. This was this is the, the kamikaze for like future in terms of like with, with, when, when M, M dropped the project and mm -hmm. people kind of like criticized it, then he came back with a project that people kind of, we expected like, oh, that's what we wanted from you. This is what I wanted from him when he dropped um, the joint early this year. I keep forgetting the name, the, the wizard, wizard or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that's how forgettable the shit was. It's not forgettable, <laughs> man. It was, listen to that album again, man. No, like really sit and listen to that album. I mean, it album. has some joints there, but like, like, it, it was missing something, bro. Now, now the juice, like, we ain't spoke or cared about the Juice World shit since when it came out. Now, I feel like that All was a throwaway. Bullshit. I felt like that was a throwaway. It was cool. They probably was in the studio and was like, yo, let's just put this shit out. Cool, whatever. Super slimy, I won't say that with because there's a couple joints on there and I do love that joint relationships. And it, it, it's thugger, it's thugger in goddamn. Right, but the, Wizard, but the Wizard is a good album. I fuck with the Wizard. Go, go back and listen to it. Maybe maybe, go back maybe, and maybe to it. how I'm describing it, the words are harsh, but I'm, I'm just gonna leave it uninspired. All right. Okay. And I think the way he was, because he did a whole press run back then. Mm -hmm. And when he was even talking about the drug stuff and whatever like that, I felt like this is what he wanted to do. He wasn't brave enough to do it then. Okay. He he actually described it. He said, "Yo, I ain't really want to tell people about certain things about me because I don't know if they would then change their minds about how the music is sounding because of what I tell them and just telling them the truth." Yeah. I felt th this one like you know I th I think he kind of got to that point to say, "Yo, to keep it trail, I can just actually live my truth." These are the real stories I love when artists tell. Especially this far in your career. At kids, I can tell. He does. It seems like most no, fans I were pretty his, receptive. I love were receptive to this. Yeah. At least for the beams. Okay. I was well, I was I was on a few planes, but I was, <laughs> I was on a few planes. <laughs> yes. All right. We're we're Relax, stunt, right. but we're no, no, flex, no, no, but. no, 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 with no Wi-Fi, nigga. I was listening to this <laughs> shit with tears in my eyes. Aww. The little, the little uh, air hostess is like, damn, you I Yeah, I was hurt listening to this one. shit. <laughs> no, I'm Could you imagine him crying over Future's music? No, no, I wasn't He's crying. Like, Bro, I wasn't crying, but I was like literally sitting there because I had Apple Music, and I was like look, reading the lyrics and shit like that. I was a little bit emotional. What's wrong with you? I can't get emotional, Wayno. Never seen emotional. Wayno is so tough. No, I don't. I, I just don't cry believe. when I listen to Uzi. Like I like. <laughs> Stop it. You're lying. Cut it out. I don't believe it's that. It's on stream. <laughs> really? Okay. Yes. I missed right. this one. All right. This All is right. Going to Let's a little see if he cried when he heard this next song. So we've. Been... Oh my fuck. Sorry, you had, you had one more thought. Well, it's it's another. You know, this is a weekend. A few projects uh -huh. dropped, and um, I don't know if everybody heard it, but it's this young lady from Buffalo named Shay Noor. She dropped this project called The Thrill of the hunt, the thrill of the hunt too, that shit is hard. Like, it, as far as women, mm -hmm. she's gonna be the next one that nobody can fuck with. 
I'm dead serious. She can I rap just as as far as women. No, 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 no. I'm know. talking oh. a lot of. No, I'm, I, she, she niggas can't fuck with her either. Like she can really rap her ass off. I just wanted to give her. So a you gotta pull what well, uh, when we do our next uh, segment where we pick our our playlist. Yeah, you gotta throw a couple. I songs I will definitely there, right? throw a song on there. Her shit is is fire. Okay. Um. Yes. So academics. Did you cry when this song dropped? Uh, we've known for a minute that Chris Brown and Drake were finally gonna have another collaboration. Uh, they haven't been on a song together since 2014 when they were on only that Snicky's track. Obviously, they made up. So this new song called No Guidance is gonna be on Chris Brown's upcoming album Indigo. Um. <laughs> what? What's up? <laughs> I ain't crying this drop. Like, yo, yo, the light skin kings are back together. What's, what's the problem? What's the problem? <laughs> Listen, it'll be tears of joy, all right? This right here, no, I like this song, by the way. Was it everything I, I you expected? The title I hate it. Like, no guidance, it feels like no stylist or no shopping. Hey, when Drake would mm. know in front of anything. I don't he think he, did he name the song as Chris Brown's song? I don't know, man. I always okay. kind of feel like Drake about to come on some fake Jamaican vibe on the song. But the song is actually a really dope song. Again, you got to realize I'm holding him to the highest... Um, standard because their last and feel like only collab with, with, with actually there was a couple more people in the song Deuce's remix yeah. and that's been over 10 years mm -hmm. it's crazy. about yeah so when this came and I got the extra early leak I was like Let's oh see you've been what listening it to it for a while that's why of course okay. of course and you know I think people were expecting your summer anthem I don't think it's a summer anthem but I do think it's a really good song um Shit, it's a song for the ladies, and shit, both of them, they've done that throughout their career the whole, um, pretty good the whole time. So I like the song. I like the song. I think it works. I can't wait to see them, like, really go on tour and perform it, and also to see if they have other songs or collabs in the works. But this was a really good um, start. You know how when you see something and you think, like, I'm not going to like this shit? Mm -hmm. like, like, just off the surface, I'm looking like, <laughs> That's that Harlem hit right there. <laughs> look at, look at that. I thought that I was gonna like. I ain't gonna lie. I thought that I was gonna like this, but that shit is dope. It's fire. I ain't gonna front. That okay. shit is fire. And, and and by the way, um, what was I gonna say? I forgot. You didn't take notes. Right. Where what have all you your been notes writing? You was writing for two minutes, minutes before we started. Where's all these notes? Show me the fucking smiley face you've been drawing over right. there. I'm not drawing a smiley face. No, no. I, I was saying that. Oh, I don't know why this always happened. And, and I was surprised that it happened on this song. A lot of times when Drake does features, it's Chris Brown's song. When Drake does features, he takes over the fucking song. Like, he, he does a feature on French Montana song, and understandably, he has, like, a five-minute verse. Mm. Like, here, like, he goes into this whole little, like, ballad thing, and I'm like, ain't this Chris Brown's song? But anyway. Hey, but they singing niggas, though. He's, singing, he's supposed to sing on it, all right? Yeah, they well, singing song, I didn't expect him to spit bars of fury on a fucking Chris Brown. No, no, well, not that, but, like, he busts out into, like, a whole Jock Keys trying to steal a song. Like, I'm like, come on, Drake. <laughs> Fall back. Let Breezy have it. <laughs> all right, man. I'm glad you guys both like the song. It's very uh, rare that you actually agree on a record. Um, so, two of the albums we've been talking about a lot are Tyler's album Igor and DJ Khaled's Father of Assad. So here's a story about beef that may or n may not really be beef. Still really confused about this. But anyway, late last week, Page Six reported that Khaled stormed into Epic Records and threw a tantrum because his album debuted at number two on the Billboard chart. Now, of course, following that, a video that he'd posted and deleted popped up again and this fuel rumors of a feud between him and Tyler. So in the video, Khaled is basically saying he makes albums so people can actually play and hear the the songs, not anything mysterious, shit that you never hear. So a fan who noticed this tagged Tyler in it, said you're doing pretty well for someone with uh, mysterious shit. Tyler responded, yeah, I am. Igor out now. Academic, surprisingly, not so surprisingly, got in on this conversation. Uh, posted on Instagram. <laughs> well, going on. I got to get in on that. <laughs> who had the better album to you? Uh, to which Tyler jumped in the comments jokingly, uh, responded, who the fuck listens to Tyler, the creator? He also reminded us that his show at Madison Square Garden sold out. I want to go. Um, anyway, a report from The Blast claims that Khaled's frustrations actually had nothing to do with Tyler, uh, that he was pissed at Billboard uh, for allegedly not approving a $100,000 sales of Father of Assad bundle deal with nutritional supplements. Sorry, this is a lot of information. At the end of this, a source close to Complex said that there really was no issue. So he wasn't mad at Tyler. He was just mad at Billboard. I don't know. Was there really a beef here? This doesn't... I don't know if the, I, I I wouldn't call it no beef. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna call it no beef, but like DJ Khaled, and this is no shade to Khaled, but that DJ Khaled and 
uh, nutritious supplements as a package for an album sounds insane, right? That shit sounds crazy to me. So I'm whether Cali is going to say Weight Watchers. Yeah, he's been in the gym. I I get. Yeah, so. I'm listen. Does all right. Um, oh. I you know that looks so shocked. I'm <laughs> disappointed. Yeah, that's some shade right there. I'm no, keeping all the way at honey. No. I'm disappointed in DJ Khaled because you think he was shading Tyler. Or we're talking about absolutely. the nutritional sub supplements. No, okay? absolutely. I, I mean, like, come but, on. But so he posted and deleted this before the album dropped. I mean, at the time, oh, Tyler was saying that people talk too much. I like mean, they when, did too much promo and rollouts. This is the thing, right? You got eat, I, and I say this. I said it before. I say it again. Creatively. Igor is a really, really good album. Mm -hmm. No, you're not going to listen to Igor to say, yo, well, what he said on there that you could rewind, like what bars he had, you're not listening to it for that. It's a really good album. It's good musically, right? And I really like the shit. Now, Khaled, he did what he does every time, which I'm not, I'm, nobody's knocking him for that. He has a ton of records, the record with Nipsey, all of that. But to, to pretend like this is not, like, that's not the reason. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I'm not going to say that he's specifically mad at Tyler, but he's mad at being number two. I mean, he's definitely mad at being number two, and I just think it looks like sore winning at this point, mm -hmm. right? Again, I, I seen a tweet that somebody put up. I, I posted it to it. Somebody said, Khaled's albums is like when somebody wears a trash outfit, but everything is designer. And they think it's fly. I thought that shit was hilarious. <laughs> like, I mean, because I don't think his album is trash, mm -hmm. but I just think that for him to even be upset mm -hmm. is like insane. Yeah, makes sense. For anything, like as, as far as his album, like he still sold very, very well. But if you ask me, Tyler has a better album than him. Still the same. I was saddened by this shit over the weekend. And of course, Tyler's having fun with it. And it, 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 I'm actually sad that I'm pulling up here to defend Tyler. Because, you know what, like, I gotta, it, whether he was mad, and again, I don't think his, his like, anger has anything to do with uh, t Tyler, and I don't think, I don't think, according to his team, they weren't mad. Of course he was fucking mad. You could tell he was mad. So just mad about the sales, but not yeah, mad, mad at Tyler specifically. Yeah, mad about the sales, and I didn't like it because it felt like, you know sometimes you see these celebrities and you see their online personality, and you have that one moment, and you get a glimpse and be like, that's who you are. Mm -hmm. That's what it felt with Khaled. Khaled's always happy-go-lucky, yo, let's dance. Yo, it felt, it's always good energy, good vibes he's always preaching. It felt like he was kind of just, like, mean-spirited and jealous. Mm -hmm. That came through on his video, where, like, he, he couldn't appreciate someone else's success, or he couldn't at least focus on what he was succeeding on. Like, I don't know if Khaled, but I, guess, I know he's going a long way in his career. Khaled used to drop these little compilation albums and really flop. Mm -hmm. Like, he did yeah, really they well this they time around. They didn't, they didn't, they never was like, the singles used big. to be big. The singles used to be big. The singles but used it, to be big. It never was like top 10 or it stayed in. The streaming there is also helping him out. Like, his album did 104. I was shocked. So to see him not being like happy, like, I don't even want to bring up Nicki, but it brings me back to the Nicki thing. Like, yo, you should be happy. I get it. Everybody wants a number one album. Yeah. That's right. an accomplishment. Right. Mm -hmm. But to kind of sit here and throw shade at something that other people like, even if you don't like it, it, it felt like bitter and jealous. And I kind of look at Cat, Cat a little bit differently because he, he because he did it. Also, okay. Khaled also has realized 2019. Honestly, like content is winning. Mm -hmm. Bro, dropping an album. With anthems, I'm just, that's just over, man. But he dropped a lot of videos, too. No, no, he did. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yo, you did a great job using big names and putting out songs that you think would work, all singles. There's zero cohesive content. There's This is not a... Like, the albums that are really doing good, even over a long run, you could look at most of them were sticking on the charts. But not all the time, but most of them. You, you'll actually see there's some content to it. People who make great albums are getting... They're getting repaid with sales. Hmm. Nigga, you're dropping a fucking album of singles. How dare you be so mad at somebody else because you felt like your album of singles with a bunch of like artists should have got really um, rewarded even more. So are you finally admitting that Tyler dropped a great album? No, no, I'm, I didn't say it. I'm not <laughs> going to catch you that. No, 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 wait. Okay. I'm not going to sit here while he downplays somebody else's shit. Okay. Because if I'm Khaled, even if I don't fuck with, like, he stands again, on I, do listen to, I do listen to Tyler when I'm cleaning my closet. Get the fuck out with the cleaning <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Get the fuck out of here. But, 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 but in reality, what? 
you gotta know what a, some some hater shit is. Right. Like I've just never been that type of person. So like for example, I, like like it's, it's, say there's a bunch of like talk shows or whatever, mm. and our numbers, all right, but then there's somebody else's numbers just crazy. I'm not gonna just start hating on them. Like yo, focus on yourself. Like it it, it makes it seems weak and weird of Khaled to do that, and then pretty much kind of like in the video he's explaining. Yeah, I ain't into that shit. That's some weird shit. That reminds me of when Troy Ave couldn't understand like the landscape of shit and uh, said, "Yeah, that's weirdo shit." Yeah. Yeah. It's go get it's Kendrick Lamar you. weirdo shit. I, I, but this, this is the thing. I, the, I think that this is a perfect time even for Tyler because with P, if you don't know who Tyler the Creator is or you're not really into him aside from music. He loves bullshit. Now it's free promo. He loves bullshit. You know what I mean? Because he joke. Because he's a fucking jokester. Yeah. And he jokes all fucking day. So he's having a field day with. Oh, this. by the way, that shit went all the way over your head, right? When uh, was it Thugger who posted? Uh, 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 it did go away. Oh my god. I was like, Amp it up. Come did on, you really? Man. Yeah, people was. And people was. <laughs> it's like, Dak, did you miss this completely? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot. But a lot of people thought that Thug was really shitting on the yeah, album. No. Like, it and, really does that. And also, like, Khaled also has to know. Mysterious shit is winning, nigga. What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> let, let's keep it real. The things you don't think are, like, mm -hmm. sad, sad music is winning. Emo shit is winning. Mm -hmm. Mysterious, Melody mostly. Music. Yeah. A lot of that stuff is winning. Like, okay. like what's not winning these days, usually, is, is the... And, you know, by the way, I want to give him credit for this album. I really like it. Mm -hmm. His past album, I didn't really care too much about it. Mm -hmm. And also, remember I was criticizing the future? You know who also got in a, in a little rut or, or a funk of just creating the same formulaic song? Khaled. Khaled added Chris Brown. See if you can grab uh, Justin Bieber or Lil Wayne and just throw him on a song with like some generic beat. Mm -hmm. He's been making some motherfucking generic songs, but it hasn't been this album. This album has been good. But even with that being said, and I know on Over and Under, we talked about top records and all that, he's still going to have top records. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, like A lot of his records are still So is it go. an ego thing? Do numbers even matter? It makes sense numbers if you're an upcoming winner. artist. Numbers make sense for you. You get bigger deals, et cetera. But we had a whole conversation about how he's not even making the most of his money off of sales. Well, so does it matter? No, no, numbers are definitely matter. I mean, I numbers... Mean, go ahead. I mean, I, the number one always matters, right? The number one, everybody always... Like, you can't be number one every day, but everybody wants to have their chance to be number one and um he didn't have a number one album i don't know if he'll have a number one single but he's definitely gonna have like top like big records so i don't think he loses in anything yeah i don't think he loses in anything and also with one of his records he has like one of the biggest stories in hip-hop because the whole song with nipsey was a two-hour conversation that he had that he was like yo make that into the song so i i think he still comes out on top in his own right, right. what tyler does is not even in the fucking stratosphere with DJ Khaled does. Mm -hmm. But when you got to put him chart to chart, yeah, T Tyler won that race. And I feel like he had the better album. But overall, like, I just think that Khaled had a moment. I don't consider him a f going forward as a hater or he hates and shit. But this definitely, like, made him look a little funny in the light. I mean, I can't sit here and lie about that. Yeah, it was a very bad look. Whatever. Very bad look. Yeah. And that hate, some people don't wear hate and jealousy well. Khaled definitely don't. He need to go back to the happy. Who wears hate and jealousy? Well, I think <laughs> a no lot, one. No, a lot of a lot of people do. They just disguise it as shade. And remember, I always talk about this whole thing about hate. Oh like, yeah. You could you <laughs> oh, can yeah. disguise hate a little bit. Right. Like this just felt like salt. The sodium levels was high here. <laughs> yeah, listen to his Tyler album like fifty times driving around this weekend. It's so good. You don't like words? Too. Huh? Shut up, Ash. There you go. Let's just keep moving <laughs> before he says something else fucking ridiculous. Shade in my ears, too. Um, all right. I'm still asking you for the hottest verse on the album. <laughs> you just said it doesn't have to be about the hottest verse. It's just a vibe. It's such a great project to listen to. Anyway, enough of you. Um, last week, we talked a lot about Cardi B and City Girls and ghostwriting accusations and how it may or may not matter. So Cardi recently appeared on the Billboard Hot 100 Songwriters of 2018 chart at number seven. Obviously, some people have some things to say on so she hopped on Twitter to reveal that she's been writing a lot of her own music. She said, quote, just like every other artist, I do have a couple of writers that help with hooks, but I wrote plenty of songs on my album and especially my mixtape. You just want to flip shit to believe it and et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> you had a lot to say about this oh, last yeah. week. So here she is saying, I write most of my songs. I just have help with the hooks. Um. I love Cardi, yo. Cardi's trying to backpedal out of this little Ghost Rider thing. I think she's kind of realizing, and most people are going to realize it, too. Like, I I've seen, you know, Cardi's spearheading this new, I'm keeping it so real, there is zero veil. And 
in music, there's always been a veil for the fans. Mm -hmm. Whether they know the full truth of how records get produced or whatever, like, you don't know everything, right? And Cardi is champion, like, yo, this is what it is. I don't give a fuck. And she's realizing that sticks with you. In every conversation where people are going to judge your art, they're always going to throw it in. It, they'll never give you the credit of staying up mad hours in a studio, not sleeping. We saw how she was going through the, uh, the whole recording process while she was pregnant. They're never going to give you the credit for that. And also, who knows, maybe Cardi does come up with a, a, a dope verse here, uh, here or there or whatever the case is. They'll never give you credit for that. They'll always now just chalk you up to be an ventriloquist for a writer. Of course that pisses her off. So she's trying to explain it in a way I don't think it goes anywhere because, again, just... Yo, stop it. You trying to get one else? He definitely drew a smiley face. On stop it. <laughs> Shit, sorry, continue. I got like 20 points on this thing. Come Con on, now you don't hear me firing off today? Finish, My bad. But I think it's, it, I, I think th when people say that it affects her, that's why she's saying that, mm -hmm. it won't go anywhere. Um, honestly, she shouldn't have never really addressed it and been so honest about it if she was going to be this defensive later. Right. Well, I mean, putting her on the chart, of course, gives people more fuel to talk shit. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, this whole shit with Cardi is like, the whole they, what does it even matter at this point? That mm -hmm. just goes to show you how, like, no matter how successful a person can be, shit can still get to them, right? And I'm pretty sure she does, like, like I said, like write some shit. Like, I'm pretty sure she writes most of the shit. Like, people acting like Cardi is, like, rapping like Nas or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, or Illmatic, or it was written, like, where Cardi's saying the most craziest, thought-provoking stuff. I think her, a lot of her verses is, like, they cool for what she does. But stop looking, like, she has to stop even indulging in it at this point. Like, just leave it alone because it's not going to go anywhere, right? It's never going to go anywhere, but she's still successful. Mm -hmm. She still does numbers. She's still, like, the fucking, the top of the, the, of the game. What's the point in even, like, having a problem with maybe this should be the last cardi uh ghostwriter songwriting conversation we have yeah it's like i feel like it is what it is and, and by the way what she wrote nobody believes that like like <clears throat> do you believe that cardi's writing most of her like <laughs> wait i'll finish what you saying do i believe that cardi's writing most of what most of her verses and someone's only coming with the hooker and idea no i think that I, I think that when she and i have no i have absolutely no idea but i think that she probably sits with somebody and she can, and they could come up with a, like a flow or something, mm -hmm. and she could just plug into it. And somebody could tell her how to make the flow. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's what I'm saying. She's not writing like verses that are people like, oh my fucking god, did you just hear what Cardi said? It's like it's it's not like she's she's saying shit that's the furthest concept of of lyricism you've ever heard. She's saying shit that's like good enough to, to, to be on the record. You know what I'm saying? So I do think that she probably is penning shit, but she is getting hooks. She is getting flows. I, I, at this point, I don't even fucking care. Like, who, who cares? <laughs> I, th I think Cardi's grown into being a artist. And what I mean by grown into it is that she she's... Maybe when she started off, like, she has got a full song, mm -hmm. but maybe she's learned to do a little bit more as time goes on. And also, she's... We see her on Instagram. She's putting in the work. Like she, she's letting you know. Like every time she clocks into the studio, she says, "I'm, I'm here." And then two days later, she says, "I'm leaving." Like she, she lets you know. <laughs> and and I think what it's it's gonna bother her at is these accolades. Mm -hmm. Whether it was I remember the Grammys when when they said, "Yo, she was nominated for um, uh, she was nominated as a, as a writer for, or she's not gonna get a Grammy if her song Bodak Yellow wins." And to be honest, she was like signed up with like ASCAP, like with Wash Pop, and that was like her her like writer name. Yeah. And so, but she was credited. Yeah. And those accolades, when people discuss it, to see people just throw you under the bus, yeah, the success is cool. But like as an artist, you kind of want a little bit of respect. Maybe you don't want to be thought of it like, as like a Nas, but like yeah. if they're giving you zero respect, you can. It's gonna bother you, and you know, Cardi, she does where emotions are asleep, yeah. quick to tweet or quick to Instagram. Yeah. But if you if you can't get any type of credit when it comes to any type of accolades, it's gonna bother you a little bit. I, so I, just, I understand her there. Yeah. It's just that I do think she kind of dug her own grave. You should have not been 
that open on the side. Do you think this is of the moment criticism, like five, ten years from now, if Cardi's still doing well, do you think people are going to care, or is this going to be a conversation forever, or is it just the internet right now? It's just the internet right now. Sometimes it's right now, and it just feels like it's forever. The only thing I would like to see is, like, um, I would like to see more of a balance of, like, the women that has never been in question of that write their shit Mm -hmm. be able to have, like, share the same type of platform as far as like accolades. Right. Like that, that that's the only thing I would really want to see because I don't think that like Cardi's success makes anybody else fail. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I, and, and of course they always have like the number one girl, but now I think is the best time for women in hip hop in a long time yep. where it's like 15 of them. Mm-hmm. Pick which one you like. But I want to just start seeing like the ones who has never been in question mm-hmm. For them to start getting, and, and then you got to make hit records for that to happen. Right. But I want to see them starting to get accolades as well. We see some like Rhapsody getting Grammy nominated and stuff like right. that. So it's heading Sierra in the right Wack, direction. Like, yeah. yeah. And by the way, you, you see also the people who say or claim that they write their own songs or they, they're they not just getting songs or whatever. They're trying to let, like put up that little, like, yo, let's put a fence across this motherfucker. <laughs> Those are the niggas who are writers, and this is us. We the real artists. Right. You've seen shit. i seen Melly do an interview. She said, I, I do all my shit, and it's very important. Mm-hmm. Asian, uh, Asian doll. She wanted to, to, ironically right now, I wanted to let everybody know, I'm writing all my shit, okay, whether they're hits or not. Yeah. <laughs> you get me? But you're seeing that little divide. And I do think this conversation, even though we might not have it, is going to continue mm-hmm. because, again, Cardi's at the top of that yeah. culture. Mm-hmm. I, I you just, get me? I just think, like, it, it, in the end, like, all right, it, stop mentioning. Like, I think that, like, as soon as somebody starts saying, well, like you said, set the fence. Well, I write my shit, I write my shit, I write my shit. But if it's not going nowhere, like, 100% of zero is still zero. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you can say that to you blue in the face how how much you write your shit just down the third, but if your shit is not impacting or it's not going nowhere, what's the point? You know what I mean? And I think that now sometimes when people jump out to say that instead of focusing on having the music, it puts them in a the box as well. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Let's see. Yeah. Let's Hopefully see. just more and more female rappers get in the conversation, like you said. Absolutely. A lot of talented ladies out there. Right. Um... On a sillier note, uh, aspiring rappers really do the most trying to get some recognition. So last week, a New Jersey rapper named NFL Doom, if I'm saying that correctly, approached 50 Cent while he was on a date trying to have 50 check out his music. Here's what happened. All right, so since this happened, uh, Doom, uh, he's been on Instagram bragging that his like views are gone up, and of course, 50 capitalized off this by making merch, because why wouldn't he? Yeah. I feel like Just it was pretty reasonable in his approach here. Not the rapper, 50's response seemed pretty reasonable. What do you guys think? Well, I... <laughs> Doom is he, he's wild. I, I do give him I do give him some credit for his passion because he's very passionate really? about right, what right. he's trying to accomplish. But this was totally wrong because it could have another time it could have ended totally a different way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like fifty. This twenty nineteen fifty. Yeah, it's twenty nineteen fifty. It's not two thousand four, two thousand three fifty. That shit would have been down cargo shorts fifty right on the day. Yo. <laughs> Yo, the plan with the cargo shorts is crazy. The, the whole barbecue outfit. He got a New York, New York Yankees hat, though. Hey, he stays with that shit. That's his signature. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think, like, the thing is, is that what's kind of crazy about this is that it makes somebody else say, well, I'm going to do that, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because now that his view, of course your views are going to go up. Cam Cohart, you know what I mean? He got beat up or whatever the case may be. And people started following him just because because of visibility. But that's not going to translate into, like, Viewership doesn't always equal to engagement. Mm-hmm. Like people might just look at shit all the time, but they don't buy it. Tons of people walk past, go window shopping every day, and never purchase. So, I mean, I get what he was. Tr- I, I ain't gonna say I get what he's trying to do. I know what he <laughs> wanted to do, but like Fifty said, his approach was totally wrong. You know what I mean? And I just want to give some love to all my Jersey rappers, man. Salute to Jersey. It's about time a Jersey rapper. Yes, get it on. is once a month. <laughs> nah, man. I'm just telling y'all, man. 
Okay. There's wolves out there, man. They hungry in Jersey, man. It's about time to get on. Anyway, he's from Irvington. I want to salute to him. However, it is right. You know what I mean? He's definitely <laughs> fucking right. Okay. It is right. All right. Here's the thing, though. We've been waiting for this moment. Like, everybody who, like, gets approached, right? Because there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. Right. You get me? Like, I always say, when you see someone, yo, I think Big Sean fucked that shit up, saying he just saw Kanye and just, like, rapped for him and he got signed. Man, that shit ain't about to work. Man, y'all better network and, and, and hopefully you can continue that but conversation. But wait, has someone ever rapped for you guys? People are just always trying to hand me CDs. CDs in Right, tell them whatever to get them on my face. Listen, yo, to keep it trill, <laughs> that's what's going on, right? <laughs> to keep it trill, the dopest thing you could do, you make a connection uh -huh. that that person could give you an ear another time. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you rapping for somebody, the person's already thinking, damn, what I got to say to get this thing out of my face, man? Mm -hmm. I got somewhere to go. I'm late. I'm about to board a plane. I'm waiting for my Uber. Shit, I'm, I'm waiting on a business call. You over here rapping for me? I ain't signed up for this. Yeah, I, not because I'm in public. It, it, go ahead. For anybody, I would just say to keep it real. Of course, you might not get a phone number or something like that. But shit, even if you're gonna say, look at my IG, be like, at least say, yo, I'm gonna message you some stuff. Hey, at least open it that we can have a conversation later. Mm -hmm. But yeah, try to interrupt I, the man on his date. I mean, but you, man, fifty looked like he was walking back to the hotel room. She, man. Stop the, playing with that the, nigga. The man. thing <laughs> is, is that when people see you, they see they shot because they never know when they're gonna see you again. Right. One time I was out, I, I was having a rough day. I had my kids with me. I was going to the bank, and like, I'm sitting down. You could visibly see that I'm having a rough day. This kid, that's the security guard in the bank. He came. He comes up to me. He like, yo, you know, I like you in the shot. Like, I appreciate that. And he's like, yo, I do music. I'm like. Come on, my nigga. Like, like you, you on the clock right now. Like, you know what I mean? So, but his approach, the thing about it was like, he didn't say, yo, I'm going to rap for you right now. I'm going to give mm -hmm. you. So when I got finished handling my business, I said, yo, today has been a really rough day for me. But under other circumstances, if you see me in another place, let's definitely, like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you you could definitely get my time because of how he approached me. Now, I've also had people just try to run up and say, like, a, 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 one kid one time said that he said something about his music. I was walking. I didn't even hear him. Mm -hmm. So then he jumped in my IG comments and started talking crazy. Like, yeah, I seen you last night. No, you did some fuck shit. Da, da. I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking? Like, I, I literally, I really did not hear this kid say anything to me. We was in a place. It was, it was in a skating ring. It was a bunch of people talking. I was moving to my next destination, and he took that away. So it's like, it's all in the approach. It's only an approach. I feel like if, if, if he'd have ran down, or not, let me not say run down, because run down means a lot of different <laughs> things, especially where I come from. But if he'd have walked up to him and said, hey, 50, I see that you you busy. I mm -hmm. uh, just want, you know, want to know if I can have an email that I could contact you. I don't ask for the number. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Ask for the email. And if he says no, then so be it. But that's your shot. But this, like, that was wild. Well yeah, handled. And, and, and also, even sometimes, like, which, which I think people... So many people, like, when they see someone, they're expecting that's the put-on moment. That's the thing. Someone's not going to make you famous in that sometimes, moment. Like, sometimes, like, sometimes, <laughs> honestly, I remember shit, like, when I was first, like, even meeting anyone to, like, do interviews and shit, bro, nobody really going to, like, nobody's going to answer your phone calls if they know you're calling for a favor. Mm -hmm. right. You feel me? Like, honestly, try to just establish some type of conversation going on with mm -hmm. the person that maybe you could be like, yo... Hey, you could give me advice on how to put out my project or whatever. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that goes a, lo a long way more than you rapping for a nigga who probably don't even care. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just ask him, like, yo, I just want some advice on, on how I should market myself. Mm -hmm. I guarantee 50 would be way more responsive. Maybe not in that situation, but way more responsive and definitely more um, attentive to what you're doing. Oh, man. You guys actually gave really good advice. Thank you. Sometimes I think you're just going to make jokes. Wayne was on that fuck shit, though. I, that nigga was right in the sky. Okay, <laughs> no, no, all right. I just want to talk about this right here. This is what I really want to talk about. Oh, yeah. About. Okay, all right. Let's keep it pushing. <laughs> um, let's get to some wild stories right now in our quick hits. The first one, a Baltimore singer named Chad Focus facing 20 years in prison for using an Amex company credit card to make over $4 million in unauthorized purchases. $4 million. How is that even possible? <laughs> Apparently, according to an indictment, he used his card to purchase audio equipment to artificially increase his streams on various services. Schoolboy Q's been trying to figure out how to do that. You could ask this guy. Uh, he bought followers, he bought views for his social media platforms, and he even purchased billboards around the country. Over four mil. How? If you make like a thousand dollar charge, Amex will hit you like, did you, yeah, is this yeah, you? Yeah. How do you get to four mil? Anyway. Salute to this young man. What? <laughs> <laughs> God 
Salute to him. Salute to him. <laughs> First of all, these companies didn't know who they're giving out credit cards to. Never trust a nigga over 35 with a, with a SoundCloud account and who's buying everything. Come on, man. You know the vibes of this guy. The guy, the guy, the guy drew a, a billboard in Microsoft Paint and paid 100000 for it and put it, I don't think it was Times Square, but in some big-ass place. And it was like flexing with it. looked I, like Times Square, though. It looked like Times Square. I respect his hustle. To keep it real, there's a lot of people like this. They're just not as bold as this. A lot of people who have a regular job, they work on their side hustle on their break time. They go to the bathroom and they, 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 they handle calls for their side hustle. That's true. This dude said, fuck it. I'm going to take it all away. Use a company car. Why would you? First of all, if it took $4.1 million for them to kind of realize they're dumb as fuck anyway. That's the fact. Okay. Or they caught it and just was letting him put himself in a fucking hole. You're right. He is going to jail. <laughs> but to keep it real, hopefully his Instagram follows going up. I might even go <laughs> pop an album. I'm sorry. Listen, if y'all support all the city girls scamming, all the finessers, y'all better not get mad at this guy. Y'all better not get mad at this guy right here. If you trust wow. a nigga over 35 with a goddamn SoundCloud account, you're still trying to get popping. I'm sorry, man. Oh, wow. $4.1 mm. All right, man. 20, you know years, 20 years in prison, though. No. He could have just, just saved the money. <laughs> you can't save the money <laughs> off, of a, credit credit, off of a fucking credit Somebody card. Somebody scammed my credit card. They were buying mad gift cards. Oh. So I don't know how they, how they like, got the money back. But... Yeah. Jesus. All right. The story Wayno has been waiting for. Oh, Over man. the weekend, TMZ obtained footage of Lil Xan arguing with a man at a gas station over his... No, two... yeah, stop, Wait, this is not yeah, funny. Stop. stop or am I even? It's not even funny. This is real <laughs> shit. I All right. So say. you guys remember Lil Xan made some comments about Tupac a while ago. I don't even remember how long at this point. People were outraged. They're still outraged. So the footage shows him arguing with a man at the gas station. This man is still furious about those Tupac comments. Things got out of control. So you hear this man taunting Xan who runs back to his car and pulls out a gun on the man, and then him and his girl take off. He later addressed this on Instagram, wait for it, Wayno, saying, the media is gonna try and twist what just happened at a gas station. I was about to be attacked and resorted to having to use self-defense. I'm not gonna read the rest of that. <laughs> Stop Fuck all you old ass bitches so told about that Tupac shit. You heard him. He got some bass in his voice, now the pistol's out. Now listen, listen, listen. First off, the dude that fucking tried to record, he's a fucking idiot, right? Because even, he, he's an idiot because first off, Tupac, as much as we love Tupac, Tupac is dead, okay? He's been dead for a very long time. He's not coming back. For all of these people who do all of this shit, trying to defend Tupac's legacy, I'm pretty sure they've never visited his gravesite, mm. never reached out to anybody in his family to do any kind of fucking work. They just looking for clout, in a sense, right? Now, the thing about Lil Xan is this. There's nobody that will kill you faster than a nigga that's scared. There's nobody on this planet that will kill you faster than a person that is scared. And now, He's scared. I don't look at, like, of course, Lil Xan, he's not no gangster, and we know that, but he's scared. If th this dude is running up to him with a fucking phone, mm -hmm. saying, say that Tupac shit now, like, what the fuck, for what? Now, if you if you would have died, your whole existence would have been the kid, the dude who got shot for fucking with Lil Xan over some Tupac comments Damn, that, that don't part. even matter. Absolutely. So, first off, Xan is also wildin' too. Like, not seriously, he's also wild too because he's, he is a, a, a kid who is worth something mm -hmm. and he signed to a label, he's doing all right in his life, et cetera, and he ain't got no bodyguard with him. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just be hopping out of gas stations and you got on jewelry and all that type of shit and you don't have no security. But that dude, this is just a conundrum of fucking bullshit. That dude was wilding. Gotta stop playing with these little niggas out here because they gonna get scared and blow your fucking top off. And that's gonna be that. I, I'm actually kind of worried why Zan even got a gun. <clears throat> Zan has because he's scared, bro. No, well, he's fucking scared. Well, well, well I'm, I'm just saying for the people around him and just him having a gun. Period. Zan been in and out of men a mental facility this year a bunch. Like, if you ever try to get an application or a permit to get a gun, they ask that type of shit. Yeah. I, I've always been worried about him because he's on the edge of snapping, and I don't even look at Tupac as being a factor in this. That's just bullying. Zan right. looks like the kid that everybody thinks they could bully. I think he probably, he probably didn't even hear the original comment, but he knows that Zan said something about pop. Mm -hmm. Say it again, but he's trying to get that viral moment. You're bullying the kid, mm -hmm. and he's at the point of snapping. You could tell even on the Instagram post that he's going to do some shit, and even if he regrets it, he's going to feel like that, that was his only option. Yeah. And 
it's unfortunate that like I've said I've said it before I don't think fame right now is what Zan needs but he can't escape it because people know him I mean look at his face his bunch of tattoos and shit yeah. his management team still wants him to go forward to they got to make money so I feel really bad for him I think something something incredibly bad is going to happen. Hopefully nothing to this extent. I mean, I hope nothing bad happens. But, but the thing about it is when you mix fear, like when you mix <laughs> fear with like not understand, like his mental health is not there all the way. You mix fear with that and you put a firearm, it's a recipe for disaster. And and that's the thing. I, I, the only way to sum this up is the only reason why he has a gun is because he's fucking scared. Because remember, a bunch of, remember last year, I ain't going to front, I was laughing too when all them teenage kids ran down on him and all of that shit. But he's scared. And, and and somebody's going to get hurt. You get hurt fucking with a scared person. Hey, Quickly. I, I hope everybody really stops bullying Lil Xan. Just because, again, you know, it's humorous for a while till it's not. Like, I look at Lil Xan, even though he's 20, like 22, 23. He's a grown man. Mm -hmm. We all know. But if you ever look at, at and I'm, I'm being very serious too, like the profile of any of these like little school shooter niggas, like they fit the same, they fit the same type of thing where they feel bullied or whatever, and and they just snap, and that's their payback, because they feel everybody's against them. Mm. And I look at it like that, where I'm like, you know, maybe for not Lil Xan, I don't think Lil Xan gonna do some shit like that. Yeah, I don't know. but I think there's a bunch of Lil Xans in everybody's hometown getting bullied. Now you get a gun, yeah, that's that's the type of person who do some really dumb shit, and. Just like how Lil Xan previously this year was told about he's suicidal, mm -hmm. somebody else continues that to want to take in other people's life. Mm. So, so I always say, listen, some, you, you know when you're doing a little bit too much, well, Wayne was a bully, so he, he might not know. I ain't no fucking bully. You Stop a saying bully, that, man. Don't what? say that. That's not, we talking all this serious shit. I'm saying, call yo, me we bully. start laughing, then he gets serious, now jokes again. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. Stop it. <laughs> no, 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 right. but, but, but what I mean is that, like, I don't know if y'all ever been like making fun of one of your homies uh -huh. and you know when like it's a little bit too much. Yeah. Like, even though Zan ain't one of the homies, like you should know it's a little bit too much because they about to not just cry, they about to do some other shit. Right. You All get right. me? Well, hopefully it doesn't get to that. Yeah, and like you said, the pot thing was a long time ago. Hopefully people will let it go after yeah, this incident. Hopefully it's okay. Yeah. It's definitely a lot. Um, all right, so we want to end by saying rest in peace to a legend. So Bushwick Bill of the Ghetto Boys, he died on Sunday night at the age of 52. Now, he'd previously been diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer. So in a statement, his publicist told Rolling Stone that he was surrounded by his immediate family when he passed away and that his family appreciates all of the prayers and support and are asking for privacy at this time. She also added that they're looking into doing a public memorial at a later date. Yes, rest in peace to Bushwick Bill, man. He's a very legendary part of the Ghetto Boys, all of that. He was on Martin, one of the funniest episodes they ever had. I know y'all two don't watch Martin like That's that. That's not true, but I didn't know he was on the show. Yeah, he was on the show. You don't watch Martin. Stop it. When we were younger. You remember, you remember, you remember the episode he was on? Wait, no. I'm going to offer my condolences again. before... I, I, I get it, you buddy. All right, well, no, no, seriously, because yeah, I don't. Uh, all right, well, every time I'm talking about TV, I be acting like I don't know. I'm the, well, one of the funniest episodes was it was um I forgot the dude's name, but Tommy Tommy was messing with his his girl, mm -hmm. and then he beat Tommy up like Bushwick Bill beat Tommy up or whatever. But you know, rest in peace to Bushwick Bill, very legendary part of hip hop. You know what I mean? Very legendary part of hip hop, especially the Houston. Yes, of course. I send my prayers and condolences to his family and everybody going through it. Um, I think. That news hit me as a surprise, um, but I, I think for some people, and especially his family, apparently mm -hmm. they knew where he was along right. the process. So, yeah. uh, rest in peace. This nigga said I watch Martin, man. You don't watch no more. Fuck out of here, bro. They play it every day. You don't watch television. What the fuck are you talking about? Any other day, you know, y'all don't watch television. Now everybody watch Martin. When I be saying shit for Martin, nobody don't okay, know what I'm on, talking about. Okay, hold on, hold on. Maybe we you don't can't. have all the episodes Yo, if, memorized if, if like you, you do, watch, but... If you don't have the, mem the episodes oh, memorized, you if, don't watch if, Martin. If, if you've never watched, like, the entire Will Smith, like, all the seasons... Um, not Will Fresh, Smith, Fresh, 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 Fresh. Um, Jamie Foxx show. You gotta watch Jamie Foxx show. Yeah, Steve Harvey show, too. was was very yeah. funny. Yeah. Steve Harvey cool. show was funny. Cool. Yeah. Right. Martin, of course, that's the Nick goal. Nick Freno was a funny shit. You get me? Too. What? Yeah, exactly. I don't know about that. All right, he's just, you know what? We got to go. Wayne was just trying to shame us here, man. Yeah, um, I bully him on television. Peace. I bully him about television. Rest in peace to Bushwick Bell. Rest in peace to Bushwick Bell.